All right, this one's about the old block six in for rude awakening. I'm going to tell y'all what it's like when you're in a gang, you're beefing with each other on the street, and then you wind up in the prison and how you survive in the prison and how it play out. So sit back, listen to this whole video, share this video with any youngins you know uh, uh, that don't understand what's going on and you're trying to save their life. This video could save their lives or possibly prevent them from doing a crime that they're thinking about doing. So if you care about them, share this video. All right. All right, Unique Mech Audio, man. I'm in Old Block right now. I'm chilling. Let me talk to the people out in Chicago right now and all the other gangbangers that we got going on, right? This is what it is. We out here, and we have to learn to live together in this housing complex behind us, in the housing complex, wherever we at. Now, because they're out here, and you have six young men that disrupted a lot of people's lives. You know, the victims, rest in peace to them and their family members as well, because everyone is affected by our choices. When I chose to sell drugs, it wasn't just that, you know, I was affecting me by going to prison. I affected my mother, my uh, my children, you know, my friends, you know, I affected everyone's lives because I was a part of their lives and now I was ejected from it. So whatever role I played is no longer there. So now they have to restructure their lives without me there. The same as now they have to restructure their lives without the brothers from the old block six because they was convicted. Now they have something called a collision in the prison. Put in the comments if y'all know what a collision is. Let me slide over a little bit. Y'all put in the comments if you know what a collision is. They have something called a collision. The collision is, you know, in prison is when they we come together as one. They have what they call a Midwest collision. A Midwest collision is put together because they're in the middle of the country. So when they send them uh, out east, you know, or out west, their numbers is smaller. When they go to like Terry Hutt, their numbers is bigger because that's in their backyard. So they might not have the coalition there, you know, as strong and it might not be as needed as it is when you out west or when you're out east. But when you're out west, right, so you understand. First of all, when you get locked up, and then you got serious charges like these brothers, they're not going to care where they put you, so they're going to send you far away from home, and it's six of y'all, so they're going to try and separate you. So it's not like you're going to be there together to slide together. Those days are over. Now you're in a federal penitentiary, and it might be five people from your whole state that's there. And those five people from your whole state might be, you know, all GDs or all BDs or a mixture of both, but it's only five of y'all and y'all are fighting hundreds of other people that came together and got a coalition or they're in their backyard. Like when you out west, you got the Bloods, you got the Crips, you got the Serenos, you got the Python, you got the Border Brothers, you know, you got everything when you go out west, right? Now, I didn't name the Nathaniels because they don't normally be out there, you know, where they, when I was in the prison, they wasn't allowed to be out there with them. That's how serious this is. But now, these young brothers are going to wind up in a federal prison. When they go in a federal prison, now they're going to get sent in. Let me give you the procedures how it goes. Let me ride you. I'm going to ride you through it. Because I know y'all don't really know. And thank God that you didn't have to experience it the way I did for me to know. Now, after they get sentenced, then their paperwork is going to go to a place in Texas called Grand Prix, Texas, which is the main hub for the designation center. When I first got locked up, they had designation centers in every region, like Pennsylvania had it in T Chestnut, you know, New York had it up, you know, wherever, and then California had it, I think, in uh, Dublin, you know, and Atlanta, you know, had it in Maryland. So, but now they put everybody that's in charge of classifying you as far as where you go in one place in Texas, a little town called Grand, Grand Prairie, Texas. 
Now, when they do that, your paperwork go there. They see who's your co-defendants, whatever, whatever. And they just try and keep the co-defendants separate. But as far as the gang members separate, like the GDs and BDs, they put you all together and you'll know where you're going to wind up. So when they wind up like, you know, out west, right? When they first get sentenced and they go through Grand Prix and they give you your destination, they call what they call the airlift. And then a bus come to the jail and they bring you in the holding cell and you bring all your property down. You pack up all your property and then they take your property and they mail it home because you're not allowed to take anything from, you know, the city jail, county jail or any other jail other than a federal prison to another federal prison. So everything they own will be shipped out. And then now they're going to handcuff them. Um, and put a belly chain around them. That's a chain going around their waist that's connected to their hands so their hands can't move past their waist. You can't even use your hands to wipe yourself when you use the bathroom. So imagine them putting you on a plane to fly from, you know, from Oklahoma to California or Oklahoma to New York. I say Oklahoma, give me all jewels. That's what this is about. I say Oklahoma because that's the main hub for the transfer center. So anywhere you go when they, you know, on the West Coast, you know, uh, if you're coming from the West Coast to the East Coast, you have to go to Oklahoma. When you go to Oklahoma, then they put you in a unit and they classify you and they put you on what plane you're going on. And certain days the plane leaves out to go to each different state to take you to whatever prison. But now these old black members, they're going to handcuff them together, shackle them, and they're going to put them in a holding tank. And when they go in a holding tank, they're going to be together. The same ones that's now in prison for killing allegedly and trying to allegedly kill each other. Now you're handcuffed and shackled right next to the op. The same op that you couldn't live with in the free society. Now you're chained up looking at them next to you. And now you got to tell them, you know, where do we go from here? You're chained up. You can't do nothing to them other than spit on them or try and bite them. And that never happens, you know, just to let you know. Because once they get the chains on you, then you realize that it's you against them. Or should I say us against them? So now we have to come together because they got the keys to the handcuffs. They got the keys to the doors. So we don't have anything but each other. And we're standing where? Shoulder to shoulder. When we were just trying to kill each other on the street. You understand what I'm saying? So this is how serious this is. These brothers went and allegedly took another brother's life. And then now, because they had beef on the street. Now when they go in prison, they're all going to be like this. Because you get on a bus together, you get on an airlift together, you know, you go in a holding tank together. And then, you know, they may even handcuff you next to each other. So imagine being handcuffed with the ops and now you're going to a new plantation. I mean, prison, hmm, pun intended. Now, so check it out. They get butt naked together. They take you in a, in a, in a room and they got these little curtains up and they tell you to strip down and then they tell you to bend over and spread your cheeks to make sure you have nothing in there and your ops is right next to you when you're vulnerable and you bent over and you're spreading your cheeks. That's how serious this is. So I know y'all ain't trying to go through this. Imagine a man that was trying to kill you on the street and then now you're standing in a the room, they just got a little sheet separating you from him. Sometimes there is no sheet. Sometimes you just stand there and you got five, six guys standing up, five, six big European police rednecks or black house niggas, you know what I mean? Standing there and they tell you to bend over and spread your cheeks. And your ops is right there while you bending over. What is going on? But yet we was on the street trying to kill each other. Come on, family. We don't want y'all to go through this. That's why I'm doing this video. All right? That's how serious this is. Now, then when you bend over, they tell you to cough. You're supposed to bend over, hold your cheek. And go, uh, that way, if you got something in you, it's supposed to fall out. You know, that, that's what they say, you know? Now, that's like going in one big maternity ward. We're all being birthed together when we go in the federal system. So the beef that we had on the street is no longer there because now we're being birthed together and we're in a big maternity ward in this prison, uh, federal prison system. Now, they'll be locked in a four by eight cell with their ops. The same ones that 
they couldn't live with on the street. Now, when you go through Oklahoma, you don't pick what cell you want. You don't pick what seller you want. They could put you in a cell with a with, with a brother from Mexico or a brother from, you know, Germany. It don't matter what color, what race, what gang. They just put you in that cell, and that's where you go. If you don't want to go in that cell, then they got a cell for you in what they call the special housing unit. So now, imagine you beefing with the, the you know, the GDs and BDs uh, beefing on the street. And then now they get locked up and they both go through Oklahoma and they make them sellies. This is the life that the old block six is getting ready to, you know, walk into. This is the life that I'm trying to prevent the youngins watching this, whether it's the GDs, BDs, the old block six, the brothers out in Chicago, the brothers in Memphis. And this goes out to you guys, too. I love all of y'all, man. I'm just trying to give y'all the jewels what it is. I don't pick sides. If you notice, I don't get into the personal what happened with whatever beef, you know, in whatever state, because that's that state's business. But trying to prevent you from going to prisoners, that's my business. Trying to let you know the hell and the torture and the nightmare that I've been through. So you won't choose to go through the same things that I did to walk the path that I did to have to learn these jewels that I'm giving you. That's my business. So I'm not getting involved in GD and BD business. I'm not getting involved in CMG and PRE or Memphis business or Latin King and Netters or, you know, Bloods and Crips. I don't get involved in none of that. I'm just bringing y'all the real, hopefully open your eyes, man. That's why I say share these videos with anyone that don't understand what the, the life after, you know, gang banging on the street. The life after, you know, scamming on the street. The life after burglary, stick-ups, whatever on the street, it don't matter what crime. They just throw you in the pen, and then now you're there with all these brothers, right? So they put a GD and a BD together that, you know, with just trying to kill each other in a free world. And then these Europeans put them in a four-by-eight cell with nothing but a mattress, you know, and what they call a bedroll, which is a blanket, you know, two sheets, you know, a towel, a washcloth, and then, you know... The next day you get your underwear and stuff. So if there's a BD already in the cell and you a GD and you get in there and you want to take a shower, you're going to have to borrow his extra underwear set. The same man you was just trying to kill. Do you see how this is? I want you all to see how senseless this is to kill each other. Because when you go into the prison, you unite together. So we have to figure out how to unite y'all out here. My assessment is when... My generation dropped the ball, and we went to prison during the crack era. We left y'all out here to fend for yourselves. So we went in there and learned another, another step, another elevation in life on how to survive in unhumane conditions in the prison while y'all was out here just trying to fend for yourselves. So I don't blame you youngins. I don't blame y'all at all. And that's why I take my time and try and talk to y'all. I don't blame y'all at all, man. You know what I mean? Because, you know, with no guidance, I wound up imprisoned with life plus 20 and served 26 years and about eight months off of that. And, you know, this is what I'm really trying to, you know, stop. Because now, after they go through Oklahoma and they go through that, then they're going to send them to... You know, let's say Atwater, Victorville, you know, Lump Park. Now when they go out there, the GDs and BDs and the whole Midwest have to come together because they have a collision. Sometimes that collision falls apart. But it is a collision when you go out there where whatever beef you had on the street, your homies is going to tell you, leave that on the street. In here, we need each other to make our numbers stronger so these other cars don't take advantage of us. So why go to prison? To learn this? When you can learn it right here at Unique Mecca Audio. You see how smooth and easy that is? It's not hard, man. You know? So, you know, when you get out there, like I said, they put you in a four by cell, four by eight cell together, you know, and you got to close your eyes with this man in the cell. The same man that you was trying to kill. The same man you done made an op on the street. Now you have to close your eyes in a four by eight cell with this man 
and watch his back. And he has to watch your back. Because now it's everyone against you guys. That's how this play out. Then when you go to the kitchen, right? Okay, y'all wake up in the morning, you go in the kitchen, you tell your homeboy, yo, they got me to sell with the BD, man, and you know, we GD, we don't deal with them on the street, they the ops, they the this and that, your homeboy gonna tell you, yo, pump your brakes, my nigga, look around. We only got two tables, three tables that we could sit at from Midwest in this kitchen with over 50 tables. The cars from this area have 10 tables. And they stay packed, standing room only to eat. So right now we got to come together and leave that op thing on the street, on the street, because now we could get slaughtered in here, man. We could get slaughtered in here. So stop all that, man. Matter of fact, yo, here's a knife. You know what I mean? Watch my back. I got yours. Now you're sitting down eating with what you called the ops that you couldn't live in the housing complex behind us. But now you're living in the prison complex in a four by eight cell. When you could have walked the other way around the projects to, you know, excuse me saying projects, but you know, I'm from New York, you know, you know, around the housing complex to get away or not having to, you know, see, you know, what you call or they call ops. This is how serious this is. Now you got a knife protecting your ops back because you're from the Midwest and you have a collision. When you say all that that happened over there, stay over there, over here, we got to protect each other. That's how the collision call work together. So you're sitting together, you're eating together, you go to the yard, you got a little area that the Midwest hang out together. That consists of GDs and BDs. When you're on the East Coast, the Bloods and the Crips even hang together in Allenwood, Lewisburg, Atlanta, when, you know, Terry, when you go to these places, they make a coalition. There was a guy, right, let me ride. There was a ride. This is the first time I ever seen this. Only thing I knew about, and I'll keep it 100, you know, I don't do no wailing over here, you need to make audio. Only thing I knew about gangbanging before I got locked up in the federal prison, you know, I learned from Colors. <laughs> Remember the movie Colors? Laugh at me. You know what I mean? I'm just keeping it 100. Only thing I knew about gangbanging was colors. That movie. So, I know that they, you know, don't like the other color. Is what, you know, we was taught back then from colors. Then when I get in the federal prison system, I mean, Lewisburg and the police came around, dude, all the commissary, they bought him uh, his toothbrush. It, it was a crew. Police bought him a toothbrush and gave him a red toothbrush. This dude blew a gasket. He took the red toothbrush, threw it out the cell, so don't put nothing red in my cell. You know what time it is. I'm a crip. This is how we moving. I don't have nothing red in my cell. And, and me, well, the police was scared to death, threatening to throw feces on the police if he ever brought him anything red in that cell. And I'm sitting there next to him, and I'm listening. So then when he was done, and the police left to go get him a blue toothbrush, right? I asked him, I said, homie, what was that about? It's just a toothbrush. <laughs> he said, nah, he said, New York, nah, we don't do that. You know what I mean? I'm a crip, so, you know, we don't mess with nothing red, da, 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 da. But this was one of them that wasn't willing to be a part of the coalition out, out east. He was still, because, you know, it was only, matter of fact, it was only like two crips and one blood was out there, you know? One blood was out there. Um, and it was just so crazy to me that the dude is arguing over the colored toothbrush they gave him in the cell and was willing to throw feces on the police and harm this police for what the police took as innocently, just giving them a toothbrush. So that's where I first learned about that. At. So then now I go out west. Now, when I go out west, you got the blood together, the crypt together, but while I'm in the east, you know, they, like I said, it was two blood, two Crips and a blood there. That's all it was there from California. Three people from California. You know what I mean? Two Crips and a blood, you know? They all hung together. And this is in 94, in Lewisburg. They all hung together. Big shout out to J-Lo. Big shout out to Woody. And I think that the, the, the blood brother, the man, mad ice. You know what I mean? But, you know, they all got along together. But when I was in a hole, I seen a brother 
that was bucking the system that didn't even want a red toothbrush in his thing, and that's why he couldn't be on the compound. But these three brothers had to come together the same way O Block Six got to come together. O Block Six with the, uh, the GDs, BDs, everything out west coming together is one, and that's called a coalition. So don't get it, don't, 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 don't get it confused and think that, you know, this is a way of life when they put them cuffs on you, that you're still going to be at war with the same people that you tried to kill. The same people you try to kill is going to be the same people you have to eat together, break bread together, fight together, live together, die together, survive together, and protect each other together. So look, you got GDs and BD beefing on the street. Then you go in the, in the prison, you got a GD taking a shower, butt naked in the shower, and you got a BD standing outside with a knife holding them down to make sure nobody run up on them. But they were just trying to kill each other on the street. And that's how they wound up getting all this time. Did this make sense to any of y'all? Make sure y'all share this video. Subscribe if you're not subscribed, man. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed. That's all I'm asking for today. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. You know, because y'all, some people complain when I tell them, but you know, about the cash app to show that they appreciate the town. They're trying to keep it going. Look how beautiful I got this set and set up for you. This costs money. You know, the same way that they donate to the CBS telethon, you know, the Christmas telethon. You, you, you give a tip when you go to a restaurant. You give a tip when you go to a bar. You give a tip when you when you get in an Uber, you know. But you come to YouTube, you watch a brother giving you jewels like this that could probably save your life or save your family member, loved one's life. And then you sit here and say, oh, he's Reverend Ike. He's begging because he's asking for a cash app. But the Uber is not asking for a cash app when it flash up on the screen and say, give him five stars. And then they force you and tell you, give a tip, $5, $10 whatever and sometimes they don't even let you go to the next phase without you even you know hitting one or the other or hitting the button you know but you know everything is a hustle so where i'm at with this is these brothers on the street trying to kill each other but now they have to sit together eat together hang together go to the yard together they watch each other's backs together you know they give each other knives to protect each other from others cuz now they have to come together under what they call the midwest coalition you understand so that's where we are so now if if a gd get in a problem in a prison let's say with uh, another race you know or another car the BDs are coming to their rescue. The same ones that they was trying to kill on the street. So you youngins out here, please, my phone number stays on the screen. I do answer the number when I'm available. I definitely sit back and I respond back to the text. I even call back a few people. They say, oh, man, I can't believe you called me back. You know, because you know, they couldn't believe they even had the number on the screen. And they say, and you called me back. And then I stay on the phone with them for 30 minutes. And all I tell them is, yo, remember my cash app work. Because I'm not going to put a price on that because I'm giving jewels. But my time is still valuable. I tell them, yo, remember my cash app work. I don't care if they send me $5, $10. I don't care if they send me. Some people send me two, dollars $300. Some people send me $1. I don't. It, it, just show appreciation. And that's why what I'm asking you today is, and remember the cash app, there's no one in my last name. It's H-A-L-L, straight. No one hit the logo, makes it say 20. It was created in 2020. Uh, you know, so now where I'm at with this is they're killing each other on the street, but they're living together, eating together and protecting each other in the prison. Why do they have to go to prison to unite, have a coalition and look out for each other? Why they couldn't do it on the street? My number is on the screen. If you all have any questions. 917-680-9091 is right under my chest. At least text me and then I'll definitely text back and we set up a call. You know, but just keep in mind my time is valuable. So don't just try and keep me on the phone for no hour and then think that, you know, you shouldn't have to compensate for me using my time. When you go to your job, you get paid for your hour, you know, but that's where we at. So I just want y'all to understand, man, that when you go in that prison, it's a whole nother world and we have to figure out how to bring the prison unity into the streets. You heard that? Bring the prison unity into the streets. You think it'd be the other way around. Everybody live peacefully together out here in this free society, and then they go to prison, and then they go to war with each other in the prison. But no, they're not warring in the prison no more, but they're warring out here. Something is broken. And if y'all got any suggestions, if y'all want to help, put it in the comments.
Now, let me see where else we at. Now, all that to be put in a cage to have to live and survive and protect each other. We kill each other on the street, and then we put in a cage to live together, live together survive together, and protect each other. But on the street, we kill each other. And in the prison, all we got is a knife out here. We got to extend those. Come on, dog. Something is not right. Please make sure the young gangbangers watch this, man. I'm not telling no one what to do. I'm not telling the gangbangers, you know, don't do this, don't do that, because when somebody harm one of mine, then I want vengeance too. You know, back then, I'm older now, so I, I balance it out a little more, you know. But when you're on the street and somebody harm one of yours, first thing you want to do is harm one of theirs. They kill one of yours, you want to kill one of them. Not promoting violence, just giving you the real what it is. This is a tutorial for those that really don't understand how serious it is. And what I don't understand is you get the people on YouTube that jump on the YouTube and ain't got nothing to do with this life. And they're going to sit there and say, oh, he's crazy. Why would he shoot him because he stepped on his shoes? You know, why would you shoot them because of this and that? Nigga, mind your business. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what it is. Just mind your business, nigga, because you'll never understand. Because they don't understand why you go to work nine to five for a white man either. You know what I mean? But they stay out of your business. And don't tell you you're a fool for going. They just leave you alone and let you go to work. So leave them alone. Let them do what they're doing unless you're going to give them something constructive to try and prevent them from going down the road that they're going. You know what I mean? You could go into the kitchen and they have assigned tables in the prison. It's a Midwest table. So the GDs and BDs sitting together, the same ones that was trying to kill themselves on the street. See, I keep reiterating that so you can see how, how ludicrous this sound is. Mike Tyson was saying. In my, my, my Mike Tyson voice, this is ludicrous. It's just ludicrous. <laughs> you know what I mean? It makes no sense. You know what I mean? If a GD, like I said, get into it with a Sereno, the BDs is going to help them. The same BDs that was trying to kill each other on the street. So what's wrong with that picture? Somebody put in the comments. Somebody explain this to me. I'm a little lost. You know what I mean? I really feel that if they look at these videos and they contact me, I'll be able to help a lot of these young people by having one-on-one -on -one conversations with them. You know what I mean? Which I don't, I don't get it, you know? Because like I said, if a, if a GD, if a BD gets in it, <clears throat> with a blood, you know, a crip, a sereno, a paisan, you know, a Latin king. They're going to move together as one against them, the same ones that they was trying to kill each other on the street for. <clears throat> Do you understand where I'm coming? Now, so I got one question to y'all watching this. And I want y'all to ask this to the youngins on the street, right? Just say, look, this, I'm going to give y'all something to ask. Y'all can even make a short out of this to put it on your channels. My question is, you asked the youngins, said, I watch Unique Mecca Audio. They said that when you go to prison, that it's a coalition with the whole Midwest, that GDs and BDs get together, even though they was trying to kill each other on the street. And now they're protecting each other in the prison, but they lost their freedom and got life for trying to kill each other on the street. Then you ask them this. Was it worth it? Is it worth it to kill each other on the street and then go be friends in the prison instead of trying to figure out a way to be friends on the street? And you ain't got to be a friend. Just be a comrade to just respect each other on the street. Respect each other's space, boundaries, and property. That's what life is about. That's all it's about. I've seen dudes that killed each other's brother wind up in the same prison living together. And that baffled me. Because there's no way I'm going to be able to live in a prison with a dude that killed my brother. But it's just something about once the handcuffs get put on them, then you get a whole new person. And then when you wind up in a raw area where your numbers are smaller, then you get a whole new person where now you got this coalition and this unity that we should have had on the street. So that's why my question is, was it worth it to kill your brother on the street and call him an out and then go to prison and then y'all together eating, living, sleeping, bending over, spreading them for the Europeans and coughing? Was it worth it? Was it worth it is my question. 
Now, I'm going to tap out. I've been on here 30 minutes, right? So I'm going to tap out. But I'm going to leave you all with this, with this right here. I'm going to give you another question and make a little short out of it. Right? This is good for a short. Right? People are so used to following a system. The system out here is they put it where they turn us against each other out here. And then when we go in there, the system is they bring us together because now we got to be together to survive against them. So we never really knew who our enemies were. That's why, I mean, when I was in the prison, I didn't run around trying to, you know, fight with a homie or fight with a dude from Chicago or fight with a dude from Georgia or a dude from California or Wyoming or Mississippi or anywhere. Because they wasn't my enemies. They didn't lock me in my cell at night. They didn't turn off the phone so I couldn't call my loved ones. They didn't cancel my visit so I couldn't see my kids. That's my enemy in prison. So I come out here, live in a free society, and then you're trying to kill each other to go to prison to unite. But can't live together out here. Don't make no sense to me. Somebody help me in the comments. But the last thing I want to say right before I go, because I've been only over 30 minutes now, you know, I could, I would love, right? Let me do this for a short. Uh, here we go. I would love to see an interview with one of the old block six in the next 10 years explaining how they've been living in prison with their ops. I would like to see a video interview with one of the old block six in five, even five years to explain how they've been living and getting along with their ops in prison. And I'm going to ask them, why you couldn't do that out here? Why you had to go to prison to get along with your ops, but out here you can't? Too much freedom or you're following the system? I, I, I'm lost. Somebody give me, give me a thing with that. See, they don't realize that, you know, it's a system. Everything is a system. People see us on YouTube. They see us doing good. Now, everybody's saying they want a YouTube channel. They're following a the system. There's nothing wrong with that. And that's why anybody I can help that's following the system that want to get views, you know what I mean, want to get subscribers or whatever, you know, holler at me. My channel is for y'all. As long as you're not a rat bastard. And I'm going to explain that because somebody hit me up and I had a conversation with them. When I say rat bastard, a person tell that's on him. Boom, stay over there and I'll know who you are. But when you tell and then you tell a person, no, I didn't tell. I'm not a rat. I never did this. I never did that. Now you're being a bastard. A bastard is two mixed breeds, two different breeds. So you want to be a criminal, you know, and not tell. And then you want to break the law and then you want to tell. Put them together. You got a rat bastard. You know what I mean? But if a dude who can't do the time, not into it for whatever reason, decide to tell that's on him. So I'm not on no anti, don't snitch. I don't even do all that, that crap. All I'm saying is let a person know who you are because you wouldn't want, you know, a wolf to come up to you in a sheep's clothing looking like a sheep and then you go to pet him and then he bites your arm off and eat your dumb ass. Is the same way when one of these rat bastards come around you saying that they ain't never tell. <laughs> you know, they would never tell, you know. And then you go in the car with them and then you get pulled over. And first thing they say is his gun before they even find the gun. The gun is on the seat. They're right there. He's seen him put it there before you got in the car. Whoa, I thought you said you was a man. You know what I mean? Yeah, I am when it's convenient. It was convenient to get in the car and eat, get money with you. But now that we have a problem and the police is involved, it's more convenient for me to, you know, just be a bastard. <laughs> All right? Now, on that alone, I'm going to tap out. Make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed and share this video, man. Share this video, man. All right? Anybody you know gang banging in the street or whatever that don't know what they're going to expect when they go on the inside or they fight with their homies on the outside, make sure you share this video so that they know what time it is, man. This is not a joke. That's why I didn't even bust my gun today. You see, today was a good day. I didn't even bust my gun, but I still got to. All right? Cheers, 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 the crime, cheers, cheers, the crime, cheers, the crime, cheers, cheers, the crime, cheers, the crime, cheers, the crime, cheers, the crime. Cheers, the crime. Cheers, the crime. Fresh out the 
can of 26 yeah. He back on the strip, uh -huh. getting back in the mix yeah. What he mentions a gift Trust. You stand up ten toes down And I suggest you pay attention to this Real. Take a little gully posse and put it in home uh -huh. He cut from the bottom, back. came up from the bottom back. Drop the book, you should go and get it The Instagram page and the YouTube, you could go and visit yeah. Then you could consider yourself linked in Real. Sit front row and get juice from a kingpin uh -huh. How he went through it so you ain't gotta go do it uh -huh. Did not pay attention would be stupid Talking about a man that probably put your grandfather on Probably the reason that him and your grams got along A man that generated millions on the block Did his time, never squilling to the cops make an audio Get, get it live like two G's in the night. Yeah. Drop top beamer so shine. Yeah. I let shorty go, she was wine. Treat her like my past, she behind me. What? Spend a couple bands on the dapper dan. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. No cap, this a roaring uptown. They be horn uptown, Dominican bust downs. Now we on the positive. You we got a lot to give. Now he trying to stop the kids from being inoperative. So take heed, homie, lend the air. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. But now it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars. It's about buying property to make the community yard. So we can give back to the youth, them. Cause they to troop them and bless up to all the rudiments. Yeah.